Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic, the final one of 2022. Ooh. This is where you submit your questions down below in the comments section using the hashtag AskGCNTech, and then we do our best to answer them. They're about bikes, tech, whatever you like. Um, so without further ado, <laughs> yes. let's get into it. First one is from APM. They say, what is your advice changing out a rear cassette on a tandem bike beach cruiser to a fat tire bike cassette to help my wife and I climb up the hills? I'm not entirely sure what a fat bike tire cassette is, but I'm assuming it's a normal cassette that's in a large ratio, in yeah. which case sounds like it's a good thing to do and it's going to help you ride up the hills at a, a slower pace with a more comfortable cadence. Sounds good. Yeah. Right, next question. Uh, next question is from David Hogg, who says, we're always told the importance of cleaning our bikes when we've finished a ride on GCN Tech, but we're also told the importance of refueling after exercise in the form of a protein shake or regular food and drink. Um, I would go regular food and drink. Mm. Um, then there's the importance of stretching and the importance of showering after exercise too. How do you prioritise what order to do all of the above when you're back from a ride and just want to collapse on the sofa? Well, I quite often just collapse on the sofa. <laughs> if I was actually looking at this in a methodical way and what, how I would approach this back when I took the cycling incredibly seriously, which is not very often anymore, first thing I would have done, again, I'd look to refuel my body first. Yeah, go whatever food recovery drink you want to do, shower. Then I'd move on to like doing some sort of stretching and stuff if you wanted to do that. And then once you're warm, dry, fed, and just chilled for a minute, then you go on to clean your bike. Because the bike can wait for a little bit if it has to. Mm. Yeah, I'd probably put, <laughs> yeah, I'd probably put the bike put the bike last. I'd put the bike down the priority list because your body's the most important thing. Yeah, but I'd probably shower first, then quickly get some food. Yeah? I would, I'm a quick grab and go kind of guy in the kitchen, then shower, then get the proper meal. Um, most important thing is just to have fun really, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> McDerp Johnny says, hi Alex and Ollie. I've just converted my bike with a flat bar into a drop bar. Love Ooh. a drop bar, flat bike. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, my palms, especially the left one, starts to feel numb after each ride. And this lasts for a few days. This didn't happen in the past with my flat bar. I'm wondering if changing the stem with a different length or more core training will help. I think it's a, it's a bike fit issue, this. Yes. Like, I, I think your the way your hands are on, uh, sort of holding the bar might not be in the optimum place. I also think that um, it, it, you're sort of putting too much pressure on your hands and then maybe not enough pressure on your bum. Yeah. Uh, so that then it's, rubbing into the bars. So yeah, I would say look at the stem position. I think your spider sense is correct. That's where I think the culprit is most likely fixed. If they've just built their bike up like this, something that just jumped out at me is that they could simply have the levers at slightly different heights. So just double check that when you built your bike, um, the levers are equal heights. Yeah, good shout. Yeah. But although I don't think core is the issue, the answer, in this case, still do some core, yeah, get some core into your routine. Little and often makes a big difference. Yeah, nice. Next question is from Gabizzle3. They say, hey, um, ask GCN Tech Elites. Uh, who are they? Sorry. Presumably us. The... <laughs> <laughs> I upgraded to an alloy aero drop handlebar, and to my surprise, my shock mechanic was unable to thread brake cables through the tops without shed shredding the cables. Any advice or should I just go carbon aero drop handlebar? Thanks for helping tips over the years. This is a common problem, right? So when you've got internally rooted cables, I think the problem they're having is that it's quite a convoluted method to get the outer cable through. You, yeah, so and the edges. So just to be caught. clear, this is what's shredding is the outer cable housing, yes. not the actual cable. No, so I think what it is that that shiny black plasticky coating which looks nice is getting caught on some rough edges as it's going through the handlebar and then scratching it all up. It's a common problem actually. I don't think the solution is just a fit set of carbon handlebars. I would spend a little bit of time with a very small needle file and um, just check the edges of the, the holes with a cable insert because there's probably just a rough edge on the insert and the exit point and that's what's causing your issue. Yeah. Good shout. Mm, okay. Um, Eric van der Wieken says, Hey guys, I've signed up for the Mallorca 312. Oh. I'm a 90 kilogram rider, already very lean, so unlikely be able to drop my weight very much. With that in mind, I'm considering a new wheel, spe wheel set. 
wind space, mm. um, which incidentally are the wheels that we tried to destroy by sending Alex down the staircase. Tried to death. destroy me as well. Um, would choosing lighter 40 millimeter wheels make that much difference? I'm thinking of a few hundred grams would barely be noticeable. Whole system weight would be around 100 kilograms of bottles and food. Should I just go in all aero with the 65s instead? Um, I would say 100% in your case, go full aero. A couple of reasons for this. First up, you're 90 kilograms. So the difference between 65 and 40 in terms of that, the, the wind sort of catching it, aero wheels can feel a lot, can be twitchy, but this yeah. is something that's much more prevalent and much more noticeable for little lightweight riders. They get blown around more. Um, it, it's not going to be as big an issue for yourself. The other thing is that when you think about weight, don't just think of it in absolute terms of like this wheel set is 100 grams lighter or whatever. Think of it in terms of the overall total system mass and as a percentage of that. And in your case, 100 grams is a teeny, teeny, tiny percentage yeah. of the overall mass. Um, for a 50 kilogram rider, it's a bigger percentage of the overall mass, but even then, it's still really small. And the overall, throughout the 312, the benefit of having the 65s over the 40s, the sl it's only slight, but the slight aero benefit will more than, it just totally, totally blows the, the weight saving out of the water in terms of how much time you will yeah. save. So go deeper. I'm in complete agreement with you on the wheels, although I would also approach your thinking in a slightly different way. I'd look at the most important things, which is slowing you down over the whole thing. So. One thing to consider, if you're already very lean, are you training to the best of your ability? And then also focus on other areas of aerodynamics. So your body position, which is free to adjust, and the clothing that you're wearing. And if you're going to invest in some fancy wheels, make sure you've got um, lightweight, fast rolling tires as well. Yeah, cool. and I would say aero socks. Yes. People are going to laugh at that, but um, we've got a video that is, is is due out. I'm not sure if it's out yet or if it's coming out soon. But we don't know. We can't a, keep a, up. Yeah, it's a chat with um, Aero Guru Dan Bigham, and he would say that in that Aero socks. Okay. Next question in says, "What difference do hubs and bearings make on wheels and overall bike speed? For example, if I had three sets of wheels with the same rim and the spokes, and then built them up with different hubs, so we've got." three different DT Swiss hub options. We've got the 350s with stock bearings, 350s with ceramic bearings, and the 180s with stock ceramic bearings. How much faster will they be and by how much? Um, they're looking into carbon aero wheels and seeing if they should buy a whole new wheel set or upgrade the bearings and hubs. I'm gonna go straight in and throw my neck on the line. The hubs and the bearings inside are gonna make a small difference to the overall performance of your bike. There Absolute is a difference, but it's difference. small. And something that's going to make like a bigger difference is going to be like if you take the seals out of the bearings. Yeah. Like if you if you had the like if for the sake of argument in the example you've given, if you had the stock 350 bearings and you just took the seals out on say your wheels and the bottom bracket, they're going to spin far more efficiently than the ceramic ones with the seals in. Yeah because most of the friction is generated by the seal in the bearing. The downside of this is that dirt and water can just ingress, yeah. wash all the lubrication out and the grease, and you can corrode your bearing much faster. But like most of the time, I do like this is, I don't think about the minutia yeah. of bearing friction. Like most of the time it's not important. If you were doing that one kind of time trial or you know, sort of important little race where every little tiny detail is gonna make potentially a bit of difference. Yeah. This is an example where you might wanna take your seals off, you can always pop some seals back on later. Yeah. Another thing that like pros do, I know that Nibbly's mechanics used to do this for him is put sewing machine oil yeah, really inside thin. the bearings because that real thin grease, it washes out super quick, like it's not a long-term solution, but he's got a mechanic who after every single ride at a race, is servicing his bike. So he will just replace it and put sewing machine in. But that's when you see them spin the cranks and it's like whoosh, Yeah. It's really lightweight. Okay, I'm in, I'm in, I agree with you again on that. Yeah, I think the hub shape and the types of bearings that you've got in there need to fall a fair way down the list of priorities of items that you're gonna to look to optimize. 
there's far more important things to focus on. Yeah, it doesn't make a huge difference in terms of your overall speed, like really small. We've absolutely flown through this week's tech learning. How the hell have we got through it so quick? We don't mess about, do we? Um, yeah, hope that has answered the questions that we've gone through. If we didn't get to your questions, sorry as always, but please do keep commenting it. I in think the one, section one thing, like yeah. if I went, the, the, my biggest priority, as yeah. I say, if when I'm looking at buying wheels and I'm looking at hubs and stuff like that and bearings, is I just want like reliability. I would, yeah. I would primarily choose like if I could have one thing, just a nice solid reliable hub with good steel bearings in that's just going to last that's yeah. the number one thing I'm, I'm with you on that yeah i think that's a really good sensible advice for everybody save your um, money for other bits of fancy bit and kit right we're out of here see you later